And now, in studio, bringing his Midwest values from the show me state to the land of San Diego. He's a triple threat, licensed as an attorney, mortgage broker, and a top producing realtor who's crushing the competition. Here to deliver you what's happening in the trenches of the market, your host, Michael Gaddis. Welcome to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of michaelgaddis.com and frontierlungroup.com. And I have a great show for you today. I have a very special guest here today that's going to talk to us a little bit about wealth management. Uh, my special guest today, is name, her name is Pat Hodgkin. Pat, thank you for taking time out of your day to uh, come and talk to us today. Thanks, Michael, for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I'm going to talk a little, I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about who Pat is. Pat brings 35 years of experience serving high net worth clients to her role as wealth management advisor. Currently, Pat specializes in advising high net worth individuals and families to craft customized plans in the areas of investment management and wealth advisory and trust planning. Pat is part of a team that collaborates with families to help uh, preserve, protect, and grow their wealth to focus on a on a, oh boy, I just got tongue tied. To and grow their wealth to focus on family, business, and philanthropic priorities. Prior to joining, she's a part of the FirstAmericanTrust.com. That's FirstAmericanTrust.com. Prior to joining First American Trust in 2012, Pat worked in financial services with UBS Payne Weber. She later moved to AG Edwards and Sons, where she worked as a financial consultant. Pat then went on to help build the planned giving program at Palomar Palmerado Health Foundation. Most recently, she was executive director for MAD in San Diego County. Pat is active in the San Diego community and serves on the board of the Alzheimer's Association and Vista Hill Foundation. She is also involved as a board director at the, Glo the Old Globe and sits on the endowment committee there. In addition, Pat is a member of the Rotary Club, San Diego Chamber of Commerce, Rancho Bernardo Business Association, North County Estate Planning Council, and the Rady Children's Hospital Estate and Trust Council. Pat, just for a little personal information, enjoys sailing, and she has, having sailed the Mediterranean for two years, she also enjoys cooking, reading, and the theater. Wow, I must say, Pat, you're very involved in the community. I mean, I almost lost my breath reading that list of stuff. I think it's really important, Michael. And also, First American Trust believes that it's really important for us to be out there helping our community and sharing our wealth and our time with everybody in the community. Oh, you seem to do it quite well. Thanks. So, so tell me, what is a wealth management advisor? What, 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 do, what do you do? So basically, we put together portfolios for individuals and their wealth. So we make sure that people are planning for today tomorrow and past their death. So we make sure that their money is invested correctly. We also make sure that their trusts are all proper and in place and making sure that they understand what is happening with their money now and with their money after they passed away. Well, when does somebody initially approach you to approach a wealth management advisor? At what stage in their life it should they approach a wealth management advisor? You know, because unfortunately there's no calendar to our death. Uh, sometimes it, it really helps to come at any time. Whenever anybody feels that they have the wealth, typically you, you want to start looking at a trust and investments somewhere above a million dollars. So once you've accumulated, which isn't hard if you own a home and you've, you've spent a little time in there and you've paid it off, once you've accumulated about a million dollars, we suggest that you come to us and you look at our investment portfolios. You also have us look at your trust. And if you don't have a trust, we can recommend an attorney to go to, to set it up. We can also help you with understanding what to say to the attorney, how to approach the attorney. We, we can really help you with every detail of your estate planning. So you kind of provide some preliminary consultation, so to speak. Like you're going to go to a, you're, you're kind of like this, you're going to go to an estate uh, planning attorney and here's the questions you should be asking them. This is the kind of things that you should be directing. Is that kind of what you get? Yes, to? exactly right, Michael. That's that's a really nice way of putting it. I think that we get, we get people in their 30s and sometimes in their late 20s when they have children 
and they want to protect their children. So they want to make sure that they have either the wealth management set up or the trust and or the trust set up so that the children are protected. Um, and then pass that to make sure that their estate is protected. Well, you mentioned earlier that you're looking for people who have maybe a net worth of around a million dollars is what you said. And you know, you're right, Pat. I mean, in Southern California, I mean, I'm a real estate broker, so I know this. It's very easy for people to accumulate wealth in their home. And, and before you know it, you might have net assets over a million dollars. And you know, that's one of those one of those times when you really need to start looking out for things like that. Even though most people don't, you know, one of the one of the one of the most frequently heard words in my show. There's one word. Well, there's a couple words, but one in particular that almost every show, and that is planning. You have to plan. And if you just go through life without a plan, bad things can happen to you. And, and if bad, something bad happens to you, it can happen to your loved ones who are trying to deal with the aftermath of that if you don't have a plan. And that goes into a little bit about trust and, and your involvement with trust because your, your name of your company is obviously First American Trust. So you know, how important is having a trust in your opinion? I think it's imperative. I, I don't think that anybody who has even a minimal amount of wealth, uh, anything over $150,000, you should have a trust. You need to have a trust. So, you know, the youth of the world in their 20s and 30s really need to start looking at this. And then, of course, if, if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, I've talked to people in their 80s who are just starting to set up a trust. If you have loved ones, you need to have a trust. You don't want to leave them in a situation where you're going to have to have a probate that could become expensive, timely, and, and really destroy what you, your plans for your beneficiaries in the future. Well, I know, I think that's something that maybe something like you or I would really appreciate because you know, I have a legal practice. It's a very small amount of time of what I do, but I get a lot of people calling me because of my real estate background. And even though I'm not an estate planning attorney, I get people who call me constantly saying, oh, we didn't, you know, my father or my mother or my sister died, but they didn't have, you know, a trust, you know, and now we're going through, and their life is like living hell right now. They don't know how to, how to move assets. They, they don't, it's, it's just literally a quagmire. It is a nightmare. And you know, I can't stress for everybody listening out there how important it is to have planning. If you've listened to any of my shows whatsoever, you will know that you have to be prudent. I know what everyone's thinking. Well, that's not gonna happen to me. I don't need to worry about that now. You never know, because we're not just talking about death. We're talking about incapacity too. We're talking, you know, and I think I told a story a couple weeks ago about the dentist who went to a dentist to get his, his teeth worked on and the dentist that he went to misapplied the, the uh, I guess, the, uh, what's anesthetic? It, the anesthetic that he was using. The guy, his heart stopped in the chair, and now he's basically a quadriplegic because of the, you know, what happened. So you, that guy never thought anything was going to happen to him when he went to the dentist. I mean, he is a dentist, and he went to a dentist. So what I'm saying is, is you can never tell what's going to happen. And so it's really important for you to, you know, to plan. So, Pat, let me, t let me ask you. What are your duties and responsibilities at First American Trust? What do you specifically do? So we try to protect the family in the situation where the successor trustee needs to step in. So we act as successor trustee. Okay, before you go on, explain what is a successor trustee? Good point. So while you have a trust and you're alive and well, you're gonna be the trustee of your own trust. If you're married, you're both going to be trustees, one passes or becomes incapacitated, the other is going to step in. But once both are either passed away or are incapacitated, you need somebody to manage your trust. So whether it's to administer the trust after death or to manage your assets while you're still alive but incapacitated, it's really important to make sure that you have the right person in that place. Now, a lot of people put their children, and I, I speak all over talking about this. I, I think that we all want to trust our kids. We all want to think that, that our children are going to be the best, they're going to do the best, they're going to be the best. So, Paul, what are you doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry <Okay>. about that. <laughs> are we all right? We're good. Okay. 
so we're going to, uh, so you have to have the right person in place as your successor trustee. We all want to think that our kids are going to do the best and be the best, and many of the kids are. But if you appoint one of your children, how is that going to affect the rest of the children or the rest of the family in your plans within the trust? And that's what we do. We take all that away from the children. And when I talk about children, you know, I deal with, with kids who are in their 60s and 70s. Uh, you don't know when, when they're going to be stepping in. They can have families. They can be very, very busy. They can be running around. They can have jobs. They can, you know, and then on top of that, you are expecting them to either administer your estate or take care of all your affairs if you're incapacitated. That alone is a full-time job. So the burden you're putting on your children is incredible. The other thing is, how, how is it gonna affect the family? I, ha I had one situation where there were six kids and mom had a trust, mom passed away. The trust read that the four eldest children got distributions outright. The two youngest, and when I say youngest, they're in their 60s, um, they, um, the, the two youngest, <laughs> um, the two youngest had distributions to be held in trust. So right away, the two youngest that were in their early 60s were really upset. They, were, they, they didn't understand why mom didn't trust them. On top of that, mom put the four eldest in trust for the two youngest. So now the anger didn't go to mom, it went to the four eldest children. When the two youngest would ask for money, the four eldest would try to do their best in trying to distribute as mom would want, as stated in the trust, but they didn't have the legal knowledge or the expertise on how to handle that. Long story short, nobody's talking to anybody anymore, and it isn't anybody's fault. Uh, everybody was trying to do the right thing. We finally stepped in, and I think we may have saved the family. Well, you know, we're going to go on break right now, but after the break, we're going to come back and talk some more with Pat Hodgkin of FirstAmericanTrust.com. And I'm going to tell a little story that's going to basically illustrate exactly what she just said. You're listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. So far, so good? Yep. It goes fast, huh? Yeah, it does. It does. No, you, 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 went, you went well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off. I'm going to just kind of I'm going to summarize what a successor trustee is again. Okay. I'm going to go and tell my little story that's going to very illustrate your case. And then uh, we'll go into some more about... Because I like to break segments up into the topic areas. They're easier uh, to keep that way. So we'll try to talk about successor trustees and you know the importance of it and the responsibilities of a successor trustee in this next segment. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. You know, it's for me. It's a great way. I can. It helps me network with people, get to know people, and it's a good content, things like that. It's a really good networking mechanism oh, because yeah. I can invite anybody on the show, yeah. and they like to come, and it's good for them too. So yeah. it works out really well. What kind of law do you practice? My, my area of law I do is only about five to ten percent of my work week, and it's probably it's related to distressed housing, just people who are losing their house. Because of my mortgage background yeah. and my real estate background, the majority of my 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 week is spent on real estate and loans. So that's the majority of what I nice, do. Nice. Yeah, and the real estate market's doing fairly well these days. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, it, and I do both real, uh, commercial and uh, residential, so it just depends. Nice, nice. So, Good. But I, I tend to take more complicated, case, because of my background, my yes. legal background, I tend to get more complicated real, I mean, real estate cases, you know, divorces, probates. You know things like that. I don't get. I don't have the luxury. It seems like like some of these other real estate people just getting the easy, you know, bread and butter ones. It's you don't really want to do that anyway. Yeah. Boring. Yeah, they're boring. <laughs> That's what I always say when I get a trust. It's like, okay, so let's make this one interesting. It's fun. And plus, I like the radio. It's, it's I get to learn a lot of new stuff I don't know yeah. about. Meet a lot of interesting people. Yeah, no, it's phenomenal, and your show is really interesting and fun. Yeah, well, thank you. They need to have you on more. Although that would, this takes a lot of time. It does. The planning and everything. It, it does. It does. It takes in, in my morning because I I'm up in Carlsbad, so it takes me 
you know, 45 minutes to come down here, and then it takes, you know, the show lasts about a little over an hour, and then it takes me another 40. So just in time alone, it takes two, but that's not including, you know, finding the guests, getting, you know, getting yeah, everything worked exactly. out, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah.